In this screencast, we're going to be working with expressions, uh, which means we're going to be also considering order of operations. This covers the problem set in Module 4, Lesson 10. Okay, in the first uh, set of problems here, we need to write expressions that match the diagrams, then evaluate. Well, let's look at the first tape diagram. The whole here is given as an expression. That's 8 plus 9, or the sum of 8 and 9. And then we have to break it down into three equal parts. So let's write the expression. We have 8 plus 9 times 1 third. Okay, we have to find the sum of 8 and 9, then multiply it by 1 third. We could write that other ways. We could um, write that as 8 plus 9 divided by 3 as well. We could also write it as 8 plus 9 over 3. Now that we have the expressions, I'm going to start, I'm going to work with the first one. So I have 8 plus 9 times 1 third. The sum of 8 and 9 is 17 times 1 third. That is equal to 17 times 1 over 3 equals 17 thirds. Now we know that that's also a division problem, so we'll t find 17 divided by 3 equals 5. 3 times 5 is 15. I subtract, I get a 2, 5 and 2 thirds. So I can write my answer as 5 and 2 thirds. Let's look at the second expression. We don't know the whole in this case, but we know the part. So what do we have here? We have the sum of three-fifths plus one-half. What do we have to do with that? Well, we need that uh, three times, so we need to multiply that by three. So times three. So we start by evaluating the expression in the parentheses. Our common denominator is 10. We 3 fifths is 6 tenths. 1 half is 5 tenths. We find the sum and we have 11 tenths times 3 equals 11 times 3 over 10. And that equals 33 tenths which equals 3 and 3 tenths. Okay, I'm going to do several of these. These are the expressions, and we need to turn them, uh, the words, into expressions, rather, and then solve. So we have 1 sixth the sum of 16 and 20. Well, the sum of, of course, means to add, and we're going to have to do that first. So we have, we can have 1 6 times 16 plus 20, okay? Even though I wrote 1 6 before the, six, the sum of 16 and 20, the parentheses tells us that we work with the parentheses, the, the expression within the parentheses first. So I have 1 6 times 36, and that equals 1 times 36 divided by 2, and... We now have 36 halves, and that is 18. Subtract 5 from 1 third of 23. We need to pay close attention to order here because we're subtracting this time. And if we're subtracting 5 from something, this is our subterhand. So this is our minuend, and we have to attend to order. So the minuend would be one third times twenty-three, because one third of twenty-three equals one third times twenty-three minus five. The minuend has to come first. So we have twenty-three thirds minus five. I will change the improper fraction twenty-three thirds into a mixed number. So I get seven and two thirds. I found that by 
dividing 23 by 3. All right, minus 5. All I have to do is subtract the whole from the whole, and we get 2 and 2 thirds. So 3 times as much as the sum of 3 fourths and 2 sixths. So we'll again write the expression in 3 times tells us multiplication, the sum of 3 fourths and 2 sixths. Now I could have gone the other way around. I could have done the sum of 3 fourths and 2 sixths. I'd still have to have parentheses around them because order of operation tells us that we multiply before we add. So we want to make sure we add first. We need those parentheses. Let's simplify the expression in the parentheses. I'm going to pick a common denominator of 12. You could uh, do 24 as well, and many of you will. Oop. And I know that if I multiply 4, the denominator 4 times 3, I get 12. So the numerator, 3 times 3, is 9 twelfths. And we can now look at the 2 6. We'd multiply that times 4, or rather 2. 2 times 2 is 4. So we get the expression 9 halves plus 4, or 9 twelfths plus 4 twelfths. We know that that is 13 twelfths. 3 times 13 twelfths. It's 3 times 13 divided by 12. Now I can see that 3 and 12 are both divisible by 3. So we'll take care of that and distribute it. And we get 13 fourths. Again, I could divide 13 by 4. And I'd get 3 and 1 fourth. On to the next. We have 2 fifths the product of 6, 5 six and 42. Okay, so we're going to have to work this part first. So we have 2 fifths times the product of 5 6 times 42. So we'll work with the expression in the parentheses first. I have 5 times 42 over 6. We can divide both 6 and 42 by 6. And now we have 2 fifths times. 35. 2 times 35 divided by 5. Again, we can uh, divide both 5 and 35 by 5. And our answer is 14. Two more examples, and we'll uh, end it with that and go on to some other kinds of problems. I just want to make sure that you see many examples so that you know what to do when it gets to your homework. Eight copies, eight copies, that's eight copies of the same thing, of the sum of four-thirds and two more. All right, that one's fairly complicated. The odd thing about this is that, that two more, well, that simply means that we're going to find the sum of these two numbers here. So eight copies means I've got to make eight copies, which is eight times. The sum of four-thirds plus two. Again, working with the expression in the parentheses first. I'm going to change uh, four-thirds to a mixed number, which is one and one-third plus two. And now we're going to take our eight times we're going to multiply, uh, add the holes, so we get 3 and 1 third. I didn't really need the parentheses there. Hmm. Well, I think the easiest way to deal with this is going to be changing this back to uh, an, an improper fraction. So we have 8 times 10 thirds. 8 times 10 divided by 3. equals 80 divided by 3. And we'll do out some division here. 80 divided by 3 goes in twice. I get a 6 
subtract, I get a 2. Bring down my 0, I have a 20. 3 times 6 is 18. And I have 2 in my remainder. So the answer becomes 26 and 2 thirds. The well, last example. Four, ti four times as much as one third of A. Alright, so again, four times one third times eight. And that gives us four times eight thirds. We now have four times eight divided by three equals 32 over 3. Do some division to change it to a mixed number. 32 divided by 3. And we get 10 and 2 thirds. Okay, this next one is uh, going to take some time. It says circle the expressions that gives the same product that as 4 fifths times 7. Explain how you know. Well, the easiest thing to do to begin with is to take the original expression and solve it showing all your steps. So I'm going to do that right now. So I have, I'm going to write it down here a little bit and I'm going to throw it in red. 4 fifths times 7 equals 4 times 7 divided by 5 equals 28 fifths, and that equals five and three fifths. All right, so I can look at the various steps of this expression, and if I see anything similar, I know I can go on. If I see something different, I know that it's not equivalent. I'll, I'll show you what I mean in a moment. So this is four. The first one is four divided by three, or seven times five, so that's 4 divided by 35. And we know that we can change our division problem into a fraction. So the answer would be 4 35ths. Well, uh, that is less than 1. And my answer to uh, for the product of 4 fifths and 7 is 5 and 3 fifths. That's over 1. So we don't need to circle that one. Let's go on to the next one. It's 7 divided by 5 times 4. There's no parentheses here, so we have to go from left to right. So, 7 divided by 5. Well, I can change that part to 7 fifths times 4. Uh, now, if I look at this, and I look at my expression here, I can see that 7 times 4 is going to be the same as 4 times 7, and then we're going to have it divided by 5. I'll take that one more step so that maybe you can see. So now I have 7 times 4 divided by 5. I'm still going to get 28, okay, and that will still be divided by 5. So this one gets circled. We don't have to go all the way and solve that. The next one, okay, the expression in the parentheses goes first, so I have 28 divided by 5. And that equals 28 fifths. And if we again compare that to our other expression, we see that we have 28 fifths, 28 fifths. So we'll have to circle this one. And I, I would accept these partially solved expressions as an adequate explanation, as long as you can connect it to the original problem or one of the steps of the original problem. Your mileage may vary with your teacher. So here we have 4, we have the parentheses, divided by 5 times 7 is 35, which equals to, which equals 4 35ths. And again, like the first expression here, we have the same answer. And that's certainly not the same as our answer with our original expression. So we don't circle that one. Next is 4 times 7 fifths. So that's 4 times 7 over 5. Well, going back to our first example that we did with our original expression, we can see that that is the same as step number 2. 
So we know that we will circle that one. Again, you can solve these all the way if you like and if that makes it easier for you. But uh, again, doing that problem out, looking at the steps and comparing them, uh, is, is, is pretty easy. Here we have 7 times 4. Okay. And again, we have the same expression that we had over here, right? And that's the same as 4 times 7 because of the commutative property. So we're going to circle that one as well. The next part is we're supposed to make the comparisons without actually solving the problems. But I would encourage you to at least do a step or two uh, to show your reasoning. So let's do that. I have 4 times 2 plus 4 plus times 2 thirds. And I have 3 times 2 thirds. Well, we're going to have to go and start with the multiplication because we have uh, the order of operation tells us to multiply first and we go from left to right when we do that so 4 times 2 is 8 plus 4 times 2 thirds what do I do next well I have to multiply okay because I multiply before I add so I ha now have 8 plus 4 times 2 over 3 and that is 8 plus 8 thirds. Well, let's stop right there. Clearly, our answer is going to be bigger. 8 and 8 thirds. Okay. It's certainly going to be bigger than 6 times 2 over 3. And that equals 2 times 2. Okay. And again, we get down to 2 times 2 over 1. We don't have to solve these all the way out. It's clear that this number is greater than that number. Do as many steps as you need to. If you end up solving it, well, so be it. But try to do the reasoning. Look at B. Notice when we look at these two expressions that these two uh, parts or two factors are identical. But these two factors are not identical. We know that 2 fifths is greater than 2 sevenths, so we know that five times the, the product of 5 times 3 fourths times 2 fifths is greater than the product of 5 times 3 fourths times 2 sevenths. That one was easy. We could show our reasoning by just saying that 2 fifths is greater than 2 sevenths. Okay, let's read this. I have 3 times the sum of 3 and 15 twelfths, and I have 3 times 3 plus 15 twelfths. This one's a little complicated, but uh, we, can, we can figure this one out. Uh, we have to solve for the expression in the parentheses first. So we have 3 times 3 and 15 twelfths. Here, let's do a step. I have 9 and 15 twelfths. Now when I multiply 3 times 3 and 15 twelfths, I am multiplying uh, that 15 twelfths 3 times, so I'd multiply 3 times 3. Okay, if I use the distributor property, I'd be 3 times 3, excuse me, 3 times 3, then I'd have to do 3 times 15 twelfths a little complicated, but we don't need to solve. We know that 3 plus times 3 is 9. We know that 3 times 15 twelfths is greater than just 1 15 twelfth. So 3 times the sum of 3 and 15 twelfths is greater than the product of 3 times 3 plus 15 twelfths. Okay, boy, the screencast is going to be a long one, but we'll uh, go on to the word problems as well. Colette bought milk for herself each month and recorded it, the amount, in the table below. For A through C, write the expressions that records the calculation described and solve it to find the missing data in the table. She bought one-fifth, one-fourth of July's total in June, so we'll have to find July, which is 2 times one-fourth equals two times one over four equals two-fourths 
and we can simplify that to one half. So we'll record in June one half. She bought three fourths as much in September as she did in January and July combined. Well, let's look at January. That's three, and July is two. So if we combine them, we're adding them. So we have three fourths of that. Well, that means we multiply times three fourths. We get five times three fourths. That's five times 3 over 4, which equals 15 fourths, which equals 3 and 3 fourths. We'll record that. Oh, wrong. That is for September. So we have 3 and 3 fourths in September. Finally, in April she bought one half gallon less than twice as much she bought in August. Okay, let's write that out. So she bought in August one. So we have one, get the right tool here, one times two for twice as much minus one half. And that gives us two minus one half equals one and one half. Okay, let's start the line plot. I recorded the values from the previous slide so that we can use them to make a line plot. Remember when we have a, the line plot, we have to consider, one, the uh, range of values here. And our least is one half and our greatest is three and three fourths. So I'm going to uh, work this uh, with a range of zero to four. And I noticed that uh, my smallest unit are fourths, so we'll work in terms of fourths. We'll also convert the values to fourths as we go along. So I start with my zero, one, two, three, four. Okay, and I'm not going to label all these. Uh, you can, but it's pretty clear what these are. So we're going to now go down the list and put a put an X above each uh, appropriate place on the line plot. For example, we have a 3, so we're going to put an X over the 3. I have a 2, we'll put an X over the 2. I have 1 and 1 fourth. I have 1 and 1 half, which is the same as 1 and 2 fourths. I have 7 fourths. That's the same as 1 and 3 fourths. One half is the same as one uh, two fourths. Two once again. I have a one. I have a three and three fourths, and I have a one fourth. All right, so I've plotted my values. The next part is we're going to add all these up. It's quite a problem, but if we work systematically, it's not a big deal. First, we'll write the expression three plus two plus one and one fourth, plus one and one half, I'm going to call it one and two fourths, plus seven fourths, which is one and three fourths, plus one half, again we'll make that fourths, two fourths, plus two, plus one, plus three and three fourths, plus one fourth. All right, we're going to work this by first getting taking out the holes. So I have 3 plus 2 is 5, plus 1 is 6, plus 1 is 7, plus 1 is 8, plus 2 is 10, plus 1 is 11, plus 3 is 14. So we have 14 plus 1 fourth plus 2 fourths plus 3 fourths. You see why it's, how it's convenient. <clears throat> that we converted all these to fourths plus two fourths plus three fourths plus one fourth. Now all we have to do is count uh, up or add up. So one plus two is three. Three plus three is six. Six plus two is eight. Eight plus three is eleven. 
and 11 plus 1 is 12. So now we have 14 plus 12 fourths. And 14 and 12 fourths is the same as 14 plus 3. And the sum is 17. So again, we should write the statement. Uh, Colette bought 17 gallons of milk from January to October. So again, it's not as hard as it looks. Work systematically. Uh, convert to common units and uh, collect the holes first, then add the fractions.